dripping off your fingertips, off your fingertips.
Southwest. It's a big music seminar. The bands from all over the country, actually all over the world, show up there and they play. It's usually kind of more or less Americana music. That's kind of what they do. 
And we played down there a, a little room about half this size, and somehow or they trained about 300 people in there. There was a writer there from Pro League Stone, and he, uh, he wrote, Vigilantes of Love, Scrappy Literate Folk Rock from Athens, Georgia. And we put that on every poster for the next 10 years. Um, I remember two things about the gig. You were in the very capable hands of uh, Devin tonight, so it sounds great. But I know, I know the PA system that we played on that night was fashioned by Fisher Price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, uh, it was um, and the other thing I remember is there was a bank, ladies and gentlemen, theater style park hands, full bore open. I could touch them, they were so close. To the left side of this little ramshackle stage, the left side of my face was burned for a week. Back where the club opens up, tall man standing there after we finished our little spotty set. I thought it was spotty. He says, long, long silver locks, about 60 years old, dressed handsomely, dressed impeccably in the uh, Southern Planners outfit. And uh, he said, I want to talk to you boys. So we got in a van, I mean, he's got in a, a limousine, and we were whisked away to a hotel room where we signed a record deal, and then we got in a van and started doing 200 shows a year. That fellow was Phil Walton Sr. We started Capricorn Records way back in the 70s. And recreated the label. Signed Vigilantes, Widespread Panic, a band out of Sacramento called K, a couple other groups. It was my little period. The reason why I tell you this is it was my little period of indentured servitude. It was, a, it, was a <laughs> it was an incubator for songs. The road became, I was telling Devin earlier, I, you know, I, I loved Johnny Cash and I loved Hank Williams, but I didn't understand where those songs were coming from until I got on a truck with no safety net underneath, so to speak. We started doing, doing shows. So here's a road song. It's called Goes Without Singing.
theologian, my favorite theologian, Woody Allen, <laughs> said that 80% of life is just showing up. And here you are. <laughs> They're in your solid B. <laughs> Early part of last year, there was a cave in, a mining cave in. Montcalm, West Virginia, 29 fellows lost their lives. It became known as the Massey Mine Disaster because that was the company that was running the mine. About two weeks later, there was another mining cave in in Kentucky, more deaths, fast forward another month, one in China. Not too long after that, before the month of June, there was one in Russia. I was a student of American history at the University of Georgia back in the day, and I had thought that maybe mining conditions, at least in our country, in Appalachia, it got significantly better, but the stories, maybe a poor choice of words on my part here, folks, but the stories that emerged from the massing mine weren't very pretty, and here's how it ran for most of them. I work in a mine, and I know it's not safe. And I go down in that cage, and I may not come up. I may not see the ones that I love and the kids that I brought into the world, but my daddy did this job, and his daddy did this job. We got land here in Appalachia, and it's hard to get rid of it, else to do. So if you said anything about the mine, its conditions, the federal uh, safety violations, you didn't have a job the next day. Word travels fast. So I wrote this song for the miners, about the miners, called Cold Dust Soul. It came off a little EP that Mariah and I released about a year ago called uh, Cold Dust Soul. And then a few more songs came and it basically became like a little six song record of minor songs. So I played a couple of those throughout the night. Here's the first one. This is the title track. We usually travel with a keyboard, but we didn't bring a piano with us on this tour. Mariah's piano weighs about 150 pounds. <laughs> This is only temporary Just a few years you'll have to shave off of your youth Sure as tomorrow Yeah, but all you'll have to borrow The company store
passions that must come with a cost. Most of my friends I know them down here by the sound of their coughs. Know them by the smiles they smile beneath those grimy faces. By those things we never ever see. Mother's world is a dark one. Mother's world is full of ghosts. Mother's wife, I'm here to say, she prays more than ghosts. And if I do meet Jesus, won't have much to show Nothing but this cold dust No, nothing but this cold dust Everybody from Steve Earle to Midnight Oil to Amy Lou Harris, he's, he's out on the road right now with uh, Robert Plant and we uh, see him from Zeppelin uh, with the Robert's band of joy. Uh, but he's a, kind of a shaker and mover in Nashville. We were fortunate to make a record with him a few years ago. You old name dropper, you. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why hardest even say it's going to be is because they think somehow it rubs off on them, of course. Best summers in Charlottesville, Virginia, with my grandmother, and she lived about uh, about 200 yards from a railroad depot, and that's where I spent most of my time, just watching the trains come and go. Uh, trains have always figured pretty heavily in Americana music, uh, gospel music, you name it, uh, because when you see one, usually it's left point A, but it hadn't come up to point B yet, so uh, they become, I'm going to play my one, my one bad pun card tonight, here it comes, they become these incredibly oriented metaphors <laughs> for a journey, like your life. Those that won't leave you, those that won't leave you, 
darling, you can't describe the sad terrain. And survey all the borders. Sugar don't it all, don't it all still look the same, the same thing. And when you find there ain't nothing special. This friend that delivers the mail for the great state of Indiana, he's a, a postal worker. He drives a rural route, about 400, 500 miles a day. Um, he's also a musician, and uh, Joel is his name. And whenever a uh, band would play through, whenever Vigilantes would play through Indianapolis, Joel would be there. Uh, his band would open for us, and then he'd go to the mail room about 4 in the morning and sort through the mail. And then he'd drive his 400, 500 miles a day of uh, backwoods. Indiana. He said he learned two things about the job real quick. One, very contemplative. <laughs> and Joel's kind of a praying man, so he got lots of time to pray. Second thing he learned about the job was because the distance between the, uh, the domiciles, farms, residences was so far apart, he was the only person from the outside world, so to speak, that was coming in contact with these folks. So he said he learned real quick to grow another set of ears because they had lots of stories to tell him. And, uh, and he listened. And he listened long and he listened hard. He said, I saw kids get born. I saw kids coming into the world, sometimes getting married, going off to war sometimes. Um, anyway, that was, uh, that was 
was his experience in the here in the mail. So I wrote this song about him. I came out on an EP last year called Rural Route. My favorite thing about putting a song together is sometimes it's the little small sort of almost mundane trivial things that become supercharged with deeper things and that's the one thing about uh, songwriting that's a challenge and uh, it will just light you know it's, it's kind of a it's just kind of being able to see life in the moments that, that go by you and, uh, and, and, and be in touch with the fact that spirit is behind it all uh, well, I'm going to ask you for a little bit more voice because it's a real quiet song so if you'll just push this in the room it, but just to see that every moment has this sort of spirit charged element to it it doesn't mean you have to respond to it in any way, you just have to be aware that it's there. And uh, that's what I liked about Joel's telling me his story about his mail run. This guitar still thinks it's a tree. <laughs> that's, that's not my line, by the way. That, that, that was said by Steve Earl years ago, and I thought it was for me as hell. <laughs> But my favorite Steve Earle quote, just well, I'm on, why, why don't you let me be tangential for a minute? Steve Earle plays a wicked mandolin too, real loud electric rock and roll mandolin, but he's, he's convinced that the word mandolin is Italian, four out of two. Rule <laughs> <laughs> around.
I've seen a lot of sunrises. Seen a lot of folks holding on and doing their level best. Me, I bring in the good news and the bad before too long. Sometimes I just bring them a shoulder. psychiatric health care facility for a couple of years. Um, oh yeah, and this is informal, so feel free to move about the cabin. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing any more than you do. We're, we're christening this place, so we're establishing protocol. Format is born right here. So. Um, this guy came into the hospital one day. I was working in the psych unit for a couple of years, and he had seen the movie Full Metal Jacket. Sure enough, he was a Vietnam vet, and uh, you know, it, it triggered, as, as you all can imagine, what they call post-traumatic stress syndrome. And he had been ultimately suicidal and homicidal for about three days, so he did the right thing. He came into the unit. We talked, I, my job was to kind of work as the intake officer, and get the initial sort of, uh, you know, analysis, and then hand that on to the doctors, and then work with the transcriptionist a little bit about this stuff. And I'm taking the stuff down in the, in the notebook, you know, and, and I'm, I'm listening to what's going on in his life, and he's, he's shaking, and, voices quivering and all that. And uh, anyway, a few days later, I got a chance to talk to him. I said, well, what, what, did, you, what did you do in Vietnam? And here's the story, if you'll, you'll listen to me, because it's the background behind the song called Friendly Fire. He said, well, you know, he said, uh, I, I flew into these demilitarized zones, and he said, uh, we had these cargo planes. He said, we had a, he said, we had about maybe 30 minutes to get the planes unloaded, the choppers unloaded, and back in the sky, because he said, for me, Vietnam was like a, Maybe all wars are like this. He said it was like a chess game with trees in the way. He said everybody knew where everybody else was pretty much, but uh, and because the North Vietcong wanted the gear and the planes and all that stuff, he said we had to get them back up in the sky pretty fast. He said in the early days of the war, North, not, not, not North Vietcong, but women and children were forced by the North Vietcong to approach these very planes, these, these supply planes, with uh, what our fellows thought were peace offers. They would approach the planes with those conical hats, those uh, hats worth of jute. Uh, they would be full of rice or vegetables, and we thought they were peace offerings, but in fact what was going on is underneath all with the North Vietcong soldiers, who more than likely were hiding out in the jungle somewhere, had packed these things up with plastic explosives. So the strategy was just to get close enough to the plane, pitch it in, and, and we'd lose everything. So this fellow, this poor fellow who was in the hospital uh, that I got a chance to meet, they taught him enough of the language to warn them. Now his, his orders were to warn them to get off the airstrip. His orders were shoot to maim. Shoot to maim, not shoot to kill. But he said, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm shooting in half light and, and near darkness. And he said, I'm, I'm hitting women and children. They're bleeding to death in the jungle and there's no medic and there's no doc in the box. And he said, after six months, I, I had a nervous breakdown. And he sent me home. Um, 
fast forward to the uh, scene of Full Metal Jacket and uh, into the hospital, and then this song showed up for me, and now remind me to tell you if there's a silver lining on the black cloud, I'll, I'll tell you that at the end of this. Friendly fire. The song's not about the battle so much either. It's about all the stuff that's going on inside everything, from his own psychology to his marriage relationships. So you've been warned. Stan, it's been 25 years or more since 
They don't, and GPS, if you haven't noticed already, they don't have settings of good neighborhood versus bad neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ended up in some pretty sketchy places in New York because Lincoln Tunnel was uh, blocked. Somebody wrecked or something. Um, so everybody could go through Lincoln Tunnel, so we had to go across Washington Bridge, but the way we got to Washington Bridge is Via Al's liquor store. <laughs> I don't know where we were. I wasn't stopping at the lights for a long time. <laughs> Baker Seal. Your eyes, 
you have to have a video. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And William in the back, he's our light man, Will, with the lights back there. <laughs> Thanks to Gary and John. Are you guys in the audience today? Here, stand up, please. They put all this together. Please, Robert. Thanks. 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 <laughs> Gary saw us in Atlanta months ago and, uh, and just kind of wandered in off the street. And, and, uh, <laughs> Got in touch and we could we could work it out on this too. It's really good to be back here. This song is called The Neon Passes Right Through. Uh, brand new. I'm not even gonna play harp on this, I'm so tired of playing this. <laughs>
Let it slide right through your fingers Or smash it with your fist First it fell Like a light in my eyes Learn to tell the truth You learn to lie And you shine Cause you can't still muster a spark Blind your eyes, cauterize your heart. Here's a little something I'd like to give to you. Skin is the neon passes Skin gets thin when the neon passes Younger brother died by his own hand at an 
early age. Sometimes all the encouragement in the world doesn't get under the skin of him. He died by his own hand in early age. He never sold the pain in his entire life. But everybody in this room tonight, everybody in this great city of Memphis, everybody in this great state of Tennessee, all over the U.S., all over the world, we've all been made profoundly better people because of the work of Vincent Van Gogh. And this story is told from the perspective of an older brother whose name was Theon, and it's called Skin. Can't please. 
please everyone. Raining 
dust for days on end. Blew all the earth to California. And just left us all here with the wind. In desperate times, you'll know everybody's part. When it's your own lines, you're like to forget. To what you were means what you now become. And it grins and says, hey,